We're going to be in Corinthians chapter 6. Okay, we'll pray. Lord, thank you for this day and thank you for for looking out for us and being with us, Lord. Uh, help us uh, help us to uh, prepare us for this week and help us to get, give us the grace to get through. Comfort those that need your, need your comfort, Lord. And just uh, guide us into your will. Thank you. Amen. Okay, there's uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord uh, has Christ with the, with, with the law? Uh, or what part has he with that believes with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, uh, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. We're going to, we'll read 7, verse 1 also. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So, Paul uh, just uh, uh, urging the Corinthians to not join themselves with the world, to not join themselves with unbelievers, to not join themselves with the with the religion, with the with the thoughts and the things of this world. And it's just that God doesn't God is a God of righteousness and it's not he's not going to be joined to any anything this world really has to offer. We'll go to Exodus Exodus thirty four. Exodus 34, we'll start with verse 10. <clears throat> and he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor any nation, and all people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, 
for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out for thee the Amorites and Canaanites and Hittites and uh, Perizzites and Hivites and Jebusites. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be a snare in the midst of thee. But you shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship, worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go abhorring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice, and thou take of their daughters unto their unto thy sons, and and their daughters go abhorring after their gods and make thy sons go whoring after their gods. So a caution from God to, uh, to his people, knowing that it's, it's easy if, uh, if, when you have a land, when you have people around you, it's easy to have to take on some of what they, what their likes and dislikes and things they do and stuff like that. And so it was a caution that, uh, for them not to have that stuff around, not to have them around, and not to, and that they would, it would be too easy for them to chase after their gods, to follow their stuff, and to, uh, and for their sons and daughters to marry the sons and daughters of these people. Now, of course, in today's world, we have, it's a little different because having, having God in us, we have the world around us everywhere we go. We can't get away from it. This was a whole nation that was uh, supposed to be centered around God. That's kind of like what us were supposed to be as believers. We have the world around us everywhere we go, but when it comes to what's within our household and what's in what we look at, what we do, if we constantly are looking at and are uh, and constantly are thinking and watching those things that are portraying worldly things, it's really easy to have that uh, take over your life slowly, piece by piece. Or you might lead somebody else away who's around too, that it's really easy to have a takeover. Um, and then if you have a lot of, a lot of uh, really good friends with the world, it's, it's or you, and uh, especially if you're, uh, if you're dating and marrying people who are part of this world, you're going to chase after the things that they chase after. They don't, as a rule, you don't tend to have, uh, you don't tend to have uh, those things, you don't tend to lead those things closer to God, they tend to lead you away. It tends to be the way it is. Um, it's not always true, but it's a, it's a good rule of thumb. And so you have that, uh, and so it's that caution that God has for his people that when translated into today's world, that we need to be careful what we put before us, who we really surround around us that we take wisdom and stuff from, because wisdom's only found in God. And so those things we have to be very careful for. We'll go to Ezra chapter 9. Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. Now, when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites 
have not separated themselves from the people of the land, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the, uh, well, Amorites, so the first word wrong. <laughs> oh well. For they have taken their daughters for themselves and for their sons, and so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of, the, of those lands. Yea, the, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and marveled and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down astonished. Then were assembled un, uh, unto me every one that trembled at the words of, of the God of Israel, because of the transgressions of those that had been carried away, and sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice I arose from my heaviness, and have rent my garments and my mantle. I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God, and said, O oh my God, I am, a, I am ashamed, and blushed to lift up my face to thee. My God, for our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespass is grown up unto the heavens. Since the days of our fathers have we been in great trespass unto this day. For our iniquities have we. Our kings and our priests have delivered into the hand of the kings of the land. To the sword, to the captivity, to the spoil, and to the confusion of face, as it is this day. And now, for a little space, Grace have been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. For we were bondmen, yet our God has not forsaken us in our bondage, but has extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia, to give us a reviving, to set up the house of our God, and to repair the desolation thereof, and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. And now, our God, what shall we have? Shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments. Uh, which thou hast commanded by thy servant, the prophet, saying, The land unto which thy go to possess it is an unclean land, with filthiness of people of the land, with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to the other, with their uncleanliness. Wherefore, now work, therefore, Give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take uh, their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace or their wealth for forever, that they may be strong and, uh, and eat the good of the land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. After all, that is come upon us for our evil deeds and for our trespass, seeing that thou, our God, hast punished us less than our iniquities deserve, and has given us such deliverance as this. Should we again break thy commandments and join in affinity with the people of these abominations, uh, was not thou be angry with us till thou hast consumed us 
so that there should be no remnant nor escaping. O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous, for we remain yet escaped as it is this day. Behold, we are before thee in our trespass, for we cannot stand before thee because of this. It was a, uh, a trespass, a, a thing that they had done to God. They had, they had gone and done what the God told them not to do. They had, uh, they had ran after the things of the people of the land. They kept them around. They married their sons and daughters to them. And, and, but yet, he's marking that God has, has left things for a little while. He has shown uh, long-suffering. He has shown patience. He has left things to, to, and tried to bring them to him uh, and realizing that they definitely don't deserve it. They, they deserve his wrath. They deserve uh, his punishment. But yet, all the more do we. We, we have the things of this world that easily uh, can lure us. We have those things in our lives that we constantly go back to. I, I know how that goes. It's just, it's, it's a way, it's so easy for us to do, to, to go back to those things that we had before, go back or think or focus on the things that are not necessarily of God. And we have to be careful that we came out of those things. We have to get those things away from us and repent of those things that we have, that we have done, because uh, we, we can't truly follow God if we've got those things in our lives. Uh, and, if, and also those people around us that, uh, that are looking at, at dating and stuff like that, they, they can't be fooling around with people that, if they're Christians, they can't be fooling around with people that aren't. Or even if the others say that they're Christian but they're not dedicated, they can't be fooling around with those kind of people because they're just fooling around with God. And so you have to you have to be careful to keep those things away from you. And we deserve God's wrath. We don't. We deserve. We look around as the church as we're taking in the things of the world and in the church so much. So many things. We got business attitudes amongst everything. You know, they, and instead of praying to God. Well, like trying to figure out a president for some Christian organization instead of praying to God and looking amongst the people on who follows and represents God, they, they, they go around and they talk to the, to the people around in the public of who would you like. How, how is that something that we should be doing? How, how, is, it, is, it, how is it the, the opinion of the people on how church should look and what should be and who should be leading? And what the leader should look like. This isn't a business. This is a house of God. This is something. This isn't. That's not the way it should be. But yet we do that as a church, especially. That's just very common. We just get all confused. We get the things of this world. Well, all the more on a on a singular, we can't do as much about that. But on a singular basis, we can look and examine our own lives on where we might fall short and kind of clean that up. So just encouraging us to make sure that we are doing as much for God and living, really living lives for God and not mixing things. Uh, we'll go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis 2.21 And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she has been taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, 
and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and, and his wife, and were not ashamed. So the first marriage that God brought, first marriage God brought together, and God made uh, a man and a woman to be together, to be, uh, to, to stand beside one another, to help along, to be that one, to be that one person. And then the caution is from Second Corinthians, a big one is, is that we don't take, we don't take the union between the world and, and us, between uh, a believer and an unbeliever, because the two things just don't mix. You have different passions in life, different things that lead you. And it's hard to necessarily lead kids and, and stuff like that. And so uh, he's, and so it's the, uh, it's the example of what God left. He had a perfect, a perfect union between two perfect people. And so he, he brought it together. And this is what marriage is supposed to look like. Now, of course, today we've got all kinds of different things. Sometimes people come to Christ late in life. You can't help what you what you what you were before you married the person, you know, who you were with. And uh, definitely, God doesn't call for us to be separated in the New Testament. God urged uh, Christ urged the urged the people when they asked about divorce, saying that hey, no. Divorce is not something God really had a plan for. He understands in the case of, of uh, in the case of fornication or adultery, something like that. He understands. He, he knows how that goes. He understands better than we do. But uh, that he that divorce is not something he wants. So we'll go to uh, Hebrews thirteen. Hebrews 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. So, they, uh, uh, the God just uh, pointing out that a marriage is to be an honorable thing. A marriage is something God brought a purpose for. It's a, it's a, it, it's a, it's a great picture of Christ in the church. It's a, it's something that the world can look at and see greater who God is, and that all the things of the world are, they're supposed to be focused on one another and and not everything else. They're supposed to. You know, keep uh, their lives and their marriage pure, and and that it's not to be mixed with anything else, and uh, especially not adultery and stuff like that. So we've got, and so he's uh, putting a real point, a real emphasis on marriage. Uh, we'll go to First Corinthians chapter seven. First Corinthians seven twelve. Okay. First Corinthians seven twelve. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother has a wife that believes not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. The woman which has a husband that believes not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. 
and the believing wife is sanctified by the husband, else were your children unclean, and now are they holy. But if the believing depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such case, but God has called us to peace. Just uh, something that was uh, on the mind of Paul that he was addressing. Because we have times it's true then, it's true now, it always has been, where you come to Christ later in life and you have a husband or a wife or whatever that's unbelieving, God still has, uh, uh, still holds marriage to be honorable. And so he still holds it that way. And the and the marriage is honorable. You have the, the believing person uh, follows God. It's calling them to follow God, to trust in God, and to really be that uh, that person in the household that, that really puts an emphasis on God in their marriage. And that if the person, uh, the unbelieving person, wants to stay, that's, that's great. You never know what might happen. You never know if maybe they'll come to belief or not. There's no guarantees with that. Right? They have their own path, their own their own thing to walk. But all we can do is the best we can do. We, all we can do is follow God and follow Him and just keep praying and hope. But uh, it's, a, it's one of those things where we have very little control. We have no real control over any of it. So it's just kind of uh, it's just kind of addressing something that just does naturally happen. So we're to for everything in our lives. We're for Second Corinthians. We're to keep. We're to, we're to keep those things wholly focused around God. To keep everything in our lives. Uh, anything can draw us away so easily and can change our perspective on things. If we focus on the things of this world, it's just so simple. Uh, especially when it comes to relationships, whether it be friendships or marriage, especially marriage, but any sort of thing, it can draw you away from God, or at least at least draw your focus away from God, which is the first step. Your, your focus gets drawn away from God, and you're more focused on other things, especially the things of this world, and you're just, it, it can very easily lead you down the wrong path. It's like a, you know, you're shooting through the moon, and if you're, if you're off by one degree, you don't man, have to go off very far. Well, if every few steps you get off another degree, it doesn't take long before you're turning back the other direction. So, so it's just an urging that, that the people of God have the things of God in, it, in this world, because we're not going to get away from the world. But God called us to be a light unto this world, to look more like his son every day and all the time, to act like his son, to think about those things, and to not think like the world. So just an, just an encouragement to us that God is with us. He has his spirit within us, and we can't do it on our own, but he certainly can. He's shown it by his son coming and dying, living the perfect life, and we can do it too because we have his spirit within us. We will never live perfectly, but but we can grow and mature in God. So, we'll pray. Lord, thank you for your word and thank you for your encouragement, Lord. Just help us and draw us. Give, give us peace for all the things in, in our lives that, um, that might be a struggle and, and a hurt and a pain. Please help us and, and, and help us through it, Lord. And just be with us and guide us and give us extra grace to live for you. Forgive us of whatever sins we might have against you, Lord, please. We need to be holy, uh, holy, clean, and and to be joined with you, Lord, please just help us and guide us. Thank you, Lord. Amen.